Hi everyone, welcome to the video. Uh, in this video we're going to be installing Retrobat, the latest version. Um, some of you may have noticed I, I recorded a similar video um, uh, a little while ago, or quite recently. Um, for whatever reason, I managed to get the uh, an, an older version of Retrobat at the time. Um, so I thought I'd uh, actually redo the video um, uh, running the latest version of Retrobat, which is currently 5.1. Uh, and I think what I did earlier was actually, in the last video, we just happened to stumble across the, the old website. Um, so just so no one else makes the same mistake again, or the same mistake as me, um, if you do a Google search on Retrobat, you see that the first, well currently the first uh, result that comes up is the old website, which is this .ovh domain. And I think I went straight to downloads link and just downloaded the uh, version 4. But if you actually go to the Retrobat website, um, you've now got a link here to the new one, which is .org. And um, I did check earlier, and actually now you do have 5.1 available here. Just in case you do go to the old website, you can get 5.1. Where, whereas when I did it well, about a week ago, it was still in version 4 here. They've obviously updated it. Um, but yeah, just so you can't you can't miss it, <laughs> what I did. Um, again, I don't know if they changed that and made that a bit more prominent. But anyway, there's a new version of the site, which is, which is retrobat.org. You can see here it's a, it looks a lot nicer, a lot, more, a lot, uh, a lot better. Um, and then you just proceed to download Retrobat. Um, again, you've got the full version here of 5.1 and uh, an option of how to update from the um, currently installed version, which of course you can do. If you did follow my video before and also ended up in version 4, you can do an update like this, but also you can update within Retrobat itself, which um, I'll show you once we get there. Um, further down the page here, you've got uh, older versions here uh, and then some of the dependencies that you need, things like DirectX, and the Visual C++ distributable, um, which I think most of you would probably already have if you've done any kind of gaming before. But if not, you can you can grab those here. So it's just a case of, of hitting download now. We take this separate page, and then what they've actually got is obviously a whole bunch of, uh, of screenshots. But also, when you actually click on download now, uh, you get the option to, to contribute. Um, so obviously they you know, provide all this for free. A lot of hard work goes into it, so obviously, you know, feel free to, to donate whatever amount you want, from as little to as much as, as you can afford or you, you feel you want to. Uh, if you don't want to for any reason, you can just hit no thanks and it will take you to the download link um, as normal. So, yeah, version 5 um, was the newer version, and actually, within the you know, within the last week, 5.1's come out, so um, yeah. Be worth me doing the video anyway to set the new version out so just click download to grab that which i've already done uh, and it's here in my downloads folder you can see when i did it the other week uh, see back on the 23rd um it's 402 obviously now we're doing this with 5.1 but it's um it's almost an identical process just um, a couple of extra settings in there that you'll notice so let's just get on with this um little shortcut there by the way uh so ignore that so yeah double click it you get the welcome, pick your language, and an intro to the uh, to the setup. Click next, click I agree. Um, stick put where you want to put it. Um, I'm going to go in the X drive like I did before. Um, the good thing about Retrobat is it's all self contained in that folder, so I'll put V5 so it doesn't conflict with anything else. But yeah, you can basically, <coughs> if you want to, for whatever reason, have multiple versions of Retrobat installed. If you're, you're you know, playing around with one and have one as your master. Um, they're all self-contained in the, in the folder, so yeah, not an issue. So now we're going to just click on next. It's going to extract this, copy a whole bunch of stuff across. So I'll just pause the video while that happens, and then we'll be back literally within seconds. Okay, so that's finished. Uh, you get the option here to create a desktop shortcut, which we're going to do, and there we're done. Right, so normally you just go off and launch this, but by default it launches full screen. Um, I'm capturing this in a in a window on my desktop, so what I will do is just change uh, change the option. So so I installed to the X drive Retrobat V5. There we go. So so everything's contained in here. Um, there's the XE to run it. Uh, but there's also this bat GUI .exe. If you run this, it just does uh, like I say, it gives you option to change some uh, some of the, the basic settings and things like edit your game list and system list, which. You know, normally you probably wouldn't need to do but if you do want to you can come in here and change those there's a chd manager which is 
Um, for those who don't know, THG is a, um, a disc image format that was introduced by MAME. It's called um, Yeah, stands for compressed hunk of data. So here basically you can take an ISO image that you'd get disk space images traditionally in and it will actually compress them and, and save you a lot of disk space. I found that converting a collection of ISOs to THD would save typically about 50% disk space, which can add up to, to quite a lot once you've got a big collection. So I'd recommend looking at that. And like I say, they've got an option to, to run it through here. If not, you do it. There's um, a, an XE that comes with, with main, which you, on a command line, you just tell it to convert. Yeah, the source ISO, it will convert it for you. But anyway, that's digressing. What I will do is just come into the rep that in e, which is the main stuff about how you can tell it to um, launch it uh, with Windows when it starts up. Um, use a Wiimote gun as a controller, that kind of stuff. Play the intro video, that you know, so with it do a, a video when you first launch. So I've got all these turned off, and actually um, this is turned off, so it's fully recognised that I've done this in the past. So. We're, we're good to go, so it might go full screen. Um, and then what I will actually do is just say, make sure it runs at the same size as my recording window, which is 920 by 1080. So I just hit save on there, yep. So once that's saved, we can exit out of here, and then we can run retro back. Just minimize this. Just drag that down a bit more so you can see it better. Uh, just go to the menu quickly because you can't hear it, but it's playing some uh, front end music, which is actually quite loud. <laughs> so I'll just turn it off. Yeah, right, yeah, so like I said, just come back out. So this is the main menu, the main sort of theme and interface, what it looks like, all the different kind of categories and collections you've got in here, your favorites, the light like gun games. What's at the moment, a lot of them say none because we haven't got any games on. I mean, having said that, if you go to all games, there's three. There's a couple of open source free games that, that they include. Um, also, they can do that. That's fine to get you going, but we want to add our own. So, yeah, so this is the main interface. Um, what I'll do now is just quickly add some Mega Drive games, or Genesis, if you're in North America. Um, so, under the Retrack folder, we've got this ROMs folder. And this is where I expect by default where expect to find all its ROMs, also you can change this if you want to. But I recommend leaving it as it is. So we've got the Mega Drive folder empty at the moment. But what I do is I do have a collection of Mega Drive games that I've got here. Roughly a hundred, because I have I mentioned before I think on some other videos but I've actually put together a like a best off collection for a whole bunch of systems. And it's pretty much all either the top hundred or top fifty highest rating or best games for that system. Obviously, if it's, an, if it's a disc-based system where the ROMs are a lot bigger, I tend to have more like 50 games. And for the systems like this, which are quite small, like the top 100, and then for arcade, things like MAME and Final Burn Neo, um, it's more like 600, because I found a script online which uh, was called um, All Thriller, No Filler. And basically, you can run the script against any any version of MAME ROM set you wanted, and when it matched the games, it would copy them out into a new folder, and you'd end up with a um, customised uh, folder full of games for main, probably about 600, which is you know, meant to be the, the best. Um, and from what I've seen, it, it pretty much is. It's got all my favourites in it. I didn't have to add any more in. It's got you know, all the classics in there. So yeah, so that's what I've done. Just created that that list because I've, I've got you know I've, I've got thousands of, of ROMs and ROM sets and that kind of stuff. But you don't want to really be adding the whole lot into your front end. You can obviously some people do, but I just find then you've just got tens of thousands of games and finding your way through them just you know it's a pain and you're never going to find like, it's hard to find the ones that you want or and a lot of those games might be might be naff <laughs> might be rubbish and you never play them or you know some might not work properly so yeah i'd highly recommend getting a, a best of collection so anyway digressing now so just copied those I'm gonna go back to our retrobat install folder go to roms find the mega drive folder like i say in, in north america it was released as as Genesis and some front ends refer to it as Genesis, but it's basically the same thing. It's just in North America it's called Genesis, in the rest of the world it's called Mega Drive. 
but effectively the same console. So, grid those in, 101. Um, now they're copied in, we simply go back to RetroBat and we can either just close and restart it and it'll, it'll scan the new game to start up, or we can go into the menu, go to game settings and say update game list and say yes. And that's it. Oh, it was just the left, but if I scroll right through, there we go, Mega Drive, 101 games, and there they all are. So obviously that's a matter, you can now just collect one and play it, and away you go. Um, but we want to add some artwork as well. But also, just to mention before I do play it, there is obviously we've added games. The only other thing you need, do need to add before you get it going is if you look in the, the, uh, the install folder, there's a BIOS folder, and in here, um, this is where you put a whole bunch of, of BIOS files um, to play, play different systems because I mean, Mega Drive doesn't need a BIOS file, but a lot of our systems do. Things, things like the PlayStation and Amiga, they need a copy of the, from the system the system software, system firmware from, from the from the console to be able to actually start up and, and work properly. Not all of them do, but some do. Um, I've got a link in the description of where to get the BIOS pack from. Once you've got it, you basically just extract it, copy it into this BIOS folder, overwriting anything that's there, and then you're good to go. And you can check that. If you go into the menu here, I believe it's going in the right place. It's system settings. No, it's not. It is, is it game settings? Somewhere down here. Yeah, right at the bottom of the game settings, you've got um, bars check. So basically, you run this, so it'll tell you any missing. Also, at the moment, we've got a lot missing because <laughs> we haven't put any ROMs in. Uh, but like I say, yeah, see, you know, bars, files, Ataris, all the uh, stuff for Amiga, like I mentioned. And I think go down, we've got the PlayStation that I mentioned as well. Uh, oh, it's not, <laughs> not all in our federal order. I thought it was in, in order. But yeah, somewhere down here, you'll have. Um, I say the PlayStation, their Dreamcast, look, DC Boot, and DC Flash are quite common. They're the uh, the bars files it needs, Sega CD, so you see the whole bunch. It you see it needs. Obviously, Mega Drive isn't here because it doesn't need one. But oh, PSX, we go. So here's the various PlayStation um, ones that I mentioned, and obviously PS2 as well. But anyway, so you, yeah, you do need some some bars files to play all those, and this is a handy deleted check. Make sure you're going to missing. So. Uh, as I mentioned, we've added all the games now, but there's no artwork. So what I'll do is I'll go to Scraper, and Scrape From is basically the scraping service we're going to use. Um, screen Scrape is a default, and I would recommend that it works really well. It covers all systems, and it's got you know gives a high rate of of accuracy and matching against the games. And a couple of them here you can try, um, but I tend to just use Screen Scraper because it works so well. Um, so we go to Settings, and here's where you can tell it which type of artwork to. Um, go against what type of image. Um, so the boxes, you've got you know, an option of 2D box or 3D box. I tend to go 2D because I, I find that every single game has got a 3D box, so you get a better match on 2D. Um, and the logo, you can have either the wheel logo, the, the transparent logo for the game, or the marquee image for the game. Um, so there's some other bits about uh, you know things like ratings. So when you browse the list of of games you'll see kind of a rating at five that other people have rated it that's quite handy um, video snap is just like a like 20 30 seconds of in-game gameplay with a video snap they call it which is handy when you're scrolling through your list to actually remind yourself what the game looks like also just bear in mind that they're a couple of meg each at least um, and the bigger your collection the bigger the artwork's going to be you just take a bit more storage so just be aware of that there's other things like fan art which is kind of like background artwork for each game uh, the bezels is kind of like the border artwork, but we'll come on to that later. And some other bits and pieces like the manual. Um, oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, things like the manual, so um, a copy of the game. And if it was a type of game that came with a map, some you know some some classic games come with a, a pull out map in the box. <laughs> you can download a, a scanned copy of that if they have it. Um, pad to keys is if you've got a game that's kind of um, more keyboard driven. Um, you can download some pre pre configured settings to map gamepad buttons and actions to a keyboard setting, so that can be quite handy depending on what game it is. Um, but I'll just I'll keep pressing all buttons, sorry. Give it some back rather than select. Back into Scraper, Scraper settings. So I'll take those off for now. 
don't think we need those for Mega Drive. So you just need to enter the password. So put that in there. Obviously I've hashed it out. So you can't see my password and details. Oh, if I keep pressing the wrong one, keep pressing back. By default on the keyboard I'm using here, it's kind of arrow keys and X and Z to select them back. Obviously you, you could use a gamepad, probably easier. But I keep getting the buttons on the wrong way. So back into Scrave and Scrave is things. I'll leave all that on, add the keys off. Type in the password. Hit the right button this time. And then hit back. Right, now you can, you've got some options when you when you scrape. You want to scrape all games, or do you want to, ones that are just missing any media, or ones that are missing all media? So it's quite handy when you've got a larger selection, a larger collection of games, sorry. I'm just going to do all at the moment. And you can ignore games that you've scanned either within the last day or the last week. Again, if you've got a large collection, that can be handy, but again, I say no, because I'm going to scan everything. And systems, this list will get bigger as you add more systems, but at the moment we've only got the one, but you can just then go for and select one, select the system you want, if you want to just do a couple of systems or just one system. So we'll have that picked, and then I'll click straight now. And now that disappears up there, top right hand corner, um, and it will sit here now, and it will scan the game. So what I'll do, I'll quickly pause the video, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back when that's finished scraping. So yeah, just going to pause and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that's finished scraping now. So now if we go in, you'll see the difference. He says, if I click in the right place. See, we've got all the uh, all the artwork here now, all the, uh, the title screens. And then when you actually uh, hop in a game for a bit longer, it will start playing the video snap. It was playing the audio, but also I'm not, I'm not recording it. And the same for these, just So you can see it's matched. I think pretty much every single one. I don't think there's any, any gaps in here, so I say screen scraper I find really good. Bit of classic Sonic. Oh, there is one. Ah, that's because that's a recent kind of like fan made version which probably doesn't it's I guess it's um a hack or a mod version so but you can also then add in the uh, the artwork manually if you want to for that so yeah so that's all looking really good um so that's all the artwork so again just to change the look and feel again we've now got um change the theme so um actually what i'll do before i forget is when i mentioned before um obviously i've had to redo this because i <laughs> downloaded the old version previously so this is version 5.1 now but if you are on an older version if you haven't done so already if you go to Go to system here and you go down. You know that's the, that is the wrong one. It's updates and downloads. Sorry. If you go in here, you've got the option to check for updates. Um, you can either check against the latest stable release, or you can get the beta if you want to, and check out the latest beta version, which I guess in this case is 5.2. Um, and just maybe check out some new features, new settings, and get some feedback to the developer. But for now, I'll stick on stable. And then you can, if you got, so you got this toggled on, it'll uh, either check at startup or check at various intervals so we hit start update what's at the moment none available if there was one it would give you the option to download and then it'll download and then restart and you're good to go um, other things in downloads to mention there's content content downloader where you've got some other kind of shareware free type games you can download to get you going uh, and then some some media stuff as well some some be mega bezels mega bezels is obviously bezels in general we'll come on to in a minute uh, themes is in here as well, so okay. Themes really change the look and feel. Um, so what I do, I'll, I'll grab one quickly to have a look. But you can see that it, it tells you the size, so I'll get one. I, yeah, Epic New Isle is is quite cool. Uh, quite basic though. It's only only just under 30 megs, so we'll grab that one quickly. This. Uh, so we hey, yeah, so either update. If you did, I think I've actually installed it before. Um, while I had the here. Uh, I was looking while I had the video paused and I did install it so you've got the option to either remove it or, or update it. If you hadn't you'd get the option to install it. Just hit select. 
the edit to the download list. You see the top right is now there. Uh, and then bezel project again. So um, as and when you add more systems, you'll have more options here. So basically the bezel project is um, a project separate, separate about it's a sort of a generic um, project that basically aims to generate a whole bunch of bezels artwork for every single system, every single game. So <clears throat> yeah, you can basically go in there and, and enable that for your, your, for your game. Um, I think there's actually someone here I think it's somewhere in here. No, nope, wrong place again. Somewhere there's options to change, oh, it. change the actual the bezel and that kind of stuff. And it'll actually then it'll give you a little screenshot of what. Oh, keep hitting back. Sorry, here we go. So game settings. You go down here and go to decorations. That's what they call the bezels. So here, here, here's what I mean by the bezels. So normally modern day monitors are widescreen, 16 by 9. A lot of the old games are designed to run 4 by 3 aspect ratio, more sort of square. Um, so if you ha that happens, you end up with some a black bar down either side of the screen. But what, what you can do with the bezel is replace that with some artwork. In this case, it's TV screen type artwork, make it look like it's playing on an old TV screen. There's some general artwork, like I say, and the bezel. What the bezel project does is basically put some sort of system theme or game theme graphics on either side. So if you're playing, I don't know, Mario Brothers, you'll have a, like you know you have the Mario Brother logo game game logo on there, and also maybe the character Mario picture of him. Basically, just making it look really nice. So that's that's what the bezels are. You can turn those on or off as you wish. Um, what I'm in this game settings menu actually. Um, like I said, that theme just allows us to apply the theme in a minute, but while we're in here, there's other things like shaders. Um, shaders basically um, apply an effect to the to the screen, to the video output. Um, things like trying to make it look like you're on an old CRT, the old cathode ray tube type TV. Um, so you can have things like scan lines, because the old, the old ones, um, old TV screens had like the scan lines across. And a lot of people think that the old, the old games look a lot better with those scan lines there. And um, there's an argument that a lot of the old graphics um, were designed with the scan lines in mind, so that they um, uh, basically take that into account. And, and you, you compare some screenshots that people provide often of a character, you know, any game character shown on a modern HD screen, and then compared to a CRT or with a shade applied, with the scan lines, it's, it kind of just softens the graphics and makes them look, look a bit more. You know, like they're supposed to look. So, but again, yeah, you can. There's a whole bunch in here that apply different, different bits and pieces. Curvature is one that makes, tries to make the screen appear as if, if it's curved, like an old CRT screen. But yeah, you, you can play with these and, and find one you like, or, or just leave them turned off. It's up to you. Um, and yeah, and in here, so video mode, you can change things like hit the back button again. So yeah, video mode, you can change things like the resolution. Um, but it, it runs out obviously for a lower end system and your system's struggling a bit you could obviously lower this resolution um aspect ratio again like i say you can do 16 by 9 16 by 9 even and the game will run on a modern screen that'll be pretty much full screen so in that case the bezels or decorations won't show up but if you run four by three then they will um and there's options here about sort of uh, about scaling the games and, and smoothing games out of the older games might look a bit blocky in the original format but you can use some processing power to smooth those out and make them look a bit nicer um auto configure control is turned on that works pretty well i'll probably leave that as it is yeah, then there's a whole bunch of different options here within retroarch retroarch is the main kind of emulation system they use with this various cores and you can go in here and play with all the different retroarch settings without needing to go into retroarch itself which is quite handy yeah a whole bunch of other stuff in here which um I'll leave for now, and that's the uh, the bars check isn't it, that I mentioned already. Right, so that theme is downloaded. So now, if we go into here, we go to user interface. Oh, keep pressing the button in here and press X. Right, so now on the themes there, but before we had card, which is the uh, the standard, we've now got the epic noir. So we just load this, hit back, and you see now it's <coughs> completely changed the look and feel. Um, like I said, this is one of the smaller smaller ones 
but like I say, it just changes the look and feel. And this guy introduces like a list down the side. It should behave the same way. Yeah, you hover on a game and it starts playing the video after a couple of seconds. Um, there's other other themes where they show the game logo on the left hand side. But yeah, basically have a look through. There's there's a whole bunch of different themes that that change the look and, and look and feel. But for now, I'll just go back to the uh, go back to the standard. So there we go. So that that's pretty much it. That's adding a game and scraping the artwork for it, and it's kind of a way you go. Everything else should work. The other thing to mention is that obviously things like RetroArch is all included, so um, things like Mega Drive should work straight out out of the out the, out the off the bat. Um, but other systems um, will need to like when we when it uses a standalone emulator, it will actually um, download it as needed, which is quite handy. So if you go into the RetroArch folder here. So, RetroArch settings menu. This basically lists all the different emulators that it uses. So, there's things like Dolphin, you know, for GameCube and Wii, um, Duck Station for PlayStation, um, Mame, some newer versions of Mame, uh, PS2, PSP. Um, good, you know, good, good example is is uh, PS3. Um, <clears throat> so. What you normally do is go into this settings menu if you need to tweak or change any settings for the standalone emulators, or indeed retroarch yourself. Um, but in this case, so if we select on it, because we've not used it before, and not had any new PS3 games. Oh, sorry, I did add this one actually. Oh, damn it. Um, it would prompt you to install it. So let's just close that out and pick one that I haven't done. That's the trouble. I was just testing it while I had the video pause and all that. So say Xena then, okay, for the, the 360. Hit select on this one, and now fingers crossed, yeah. So you don't have it installed, you install it now. Just say yes, it goes off, downloads the latest version for you. So you don't have to, don't have to know where to get it from, you don't have to download it manually or install it. And that's it done. And then just launches the emulator off the screen here. So that's the basic, the basic emulator launched. Um, no game running, but just launched. And now you can go in here and you can change some settings, um, change your bits and pieces. And then when you're happy, you just exit. And then Retro Battle go back to its main menu. Yeah, so yeah, you don't have it installed now. Yeah. And then again, yeah, it just launches the emulator. And there you go. Yeah. So some setup for this one is like adding again, adding a bar file. It's something it knows it hasn't got at the moment. And again, yeah, it hasn't got all this, uh, all these kind of bar files that it needs. But that that, launch, that launches it up, so you can actually then configure it once you've configured it. You know the display, the audio controls. You can exit, you come back here, you're done. If you need to come and tweak it again, you can come back here and launch emulator and tweak. So that's pretty much how you do it. Um, like I say, a lot of the band systems obviously come included. That's for adding extra ones. So, like I say, that's it. We've got Mega Drive added now. It's just a case of repeating that for your other systems. Just dropping the dropping the ROMs into the right folder under under the main ROMs folder, and then either restarting Retro about or just going to menu and say and update the list. So, yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, hopefully that was helpful. I'll say I I'll, I'll, I'll leave the other video up that I've done on version four. Unfortunately, with with um, with YouTube, you can't just go and replace the video. You have to basically upload a new a new one and replace it that way. So I'll leave the other one where it is. There's, there was I think there was at least one comment on it, so I didn't want to remove it. So I'll put this as a new video, obviously, and, and, and title it version 5.1. But like I say, LED, the install is, is almost identical. Um, and obviously, the configuration inside is pretty much identical because obviously it's using the emulation station as the front end. Um, so yeah, hope that was useful. A little bit of an update video, I guess. Um, but yeah. Um, like I said, just um, just yeah. If you, if you like the video, please like it. Uh, please subscribe as well. That'd be really handy. I'm trying to keep the content coming, and trying to cover certainly. You know, um, trying to cover all the different emulation options and emulation um, front ends and, and emulators that are possible. Try to give people just you know basic introduction to each one and show how how it works, how to install them. So for the people that are, I've been emulating for a while or, or are new to it, can basically learn fairly easy how how to do bits and pieces. Um, and I have actually I've started a Facebook group to go along with this, so 
I think it's probably it's an easier place to sort of chat and ask questions about different bits and pieces than trying to use the comments in YouTube. So again, I'll drop the link in the description. So yeah, please please feel free to, to join the group. It's an open group you can join and you ask any questions about the videos or just any questions in general really. Um, it doesn't have to be retro gaming related either. It could just be sort of tech related. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.